I went down to the UW farm to take an inside look at what goes on here every day, how it all started, and where it's headed next. Four or five years ago, uh, a group of about five uh, students and faculty were looking at this spot here, which was basically just bare dirt, um, and said we should have a garden here. It's, it's ridiculous to have bare dirt. So they put in a ton of work and they did what's called double digging. It was, a, it was an excellent, excellent experience to, to just get free license to expand and garden where you wanted. Right now we're at a point where there are so many people involved with the farm and so many people who are wanting to do work. We're really you know, searching for things for them to do. And so what we're trying to do with that energy now is uh, move on to new spot. We're trying to get more land because you can only grow so much food on a third of an acre. And so we got our, we got our eyes on uh, Foggy Field right over there. It's a little less than an acre. And uh, we're in the process of developing a plan uh, how we would use that space to take to the Campus Landscape Advisory Committee. The Campus Sustainability Fund uh, is one of the most amazing things that I've heard about. It, you know, it takes, everyone pays into it. I think it's five to ten dollars. We can get grants for up to sixty thousand dollars to do things like expand, maybe buy something that we really need here. We want a bigger farm. We want a farm that, that can support a vast array of education opportunities for students and can also produce food for the HFS. HFS has basically said they'll take any food that we can grow for them because it's great, right? It's local, it's organic, it's student grown. There is so much urban space that can be gardened and it, like when you, you know, when you grow your own food in your back do your yard, your carbon footprint just like goes down exponentially. We've expanded into all around the greenhouse here out front, uh, what we call the back 40 back there, which is uh, certainly not 40 acres, but it's a hell of a lot more space than we used to have. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of trees here, which, I mean, I love trees, everyone loves trees, but it means that we can't grow anything that well, so instead of using this area to make more beds for growing plants, we're just going to use this area to just make a lot of compost. This is part of our compost system. We do a lot of different types of composting here. Um, it's less efficient to do so many different types, but uh, it's a great educational experience. We've expanded uh, the diversity of things we actually do with our hands, and um, kind of most importantly, we've expanded the educational facets of the farms. The Botany Greenhouse, located just beside the farm, is also an important educational facility. Doug Ewing, who manages the greenhouse, was kind enough to give me a quick tour. There are four rooms with teaching collections, and let's go in one and look at it. This is one of our warmer tropical rooms, and has a lot of plants that are economically important. We know we show visitors coffee, uh, chocolate. This is the world's largest seed. It's sometimes the people call it the double coconut, but it's a palm tree from the Seychelles Islands. This specimen I've been growing for more than 25 years and it's gotten some size. It has these really cool looking uh, leaf scars. These are roots. So as this thing grows and gets taller, it keeps dropping roots that will go down, um, in some cases, 100 feet. We have in this room a lot of the epiphytes, the, the plants that grow on the side of trees. Little trigger hairs down inside the leaf. And you have to tickle them a couple of times to get it to activate the trap. Every day is different in terms of what's going on with the plants. We, we don't have um, coursework in uh, how to grow plants. You know, that's where groups like the UW Farm really have sort of blossomed because that's one of their strong interests. So we have different colleges, different schools, different departments all coming down and learning about things they're studying through uh, hands-on work at the farm. We have a Cobb Oven event. Every month we get, you know, anywhere between 20 and 40 people out here just making pizza and hanging out. This is what really got the, uh, yeah, like the UW farm like on the map is something that we did, <laughs> you know. We built this and um, everyone likes it and everyone uses it, so everyone's happy about it. On this table right here, we just have like 20 people standing around, rolling out pizzas, throw it in there, and it takes like two to three minutes to cook, pull it out, and everyone gets a slice. This is our herb spiral, and it's kind of cool because it's right next to the cob oven, so that when you're making like pizzas and like fancy things, you can just come over here and get some rosemary, sage, oregano. Higher up, it's a different microclimate than down here. So you get you put the ones that like it a little bit drier up here, 
and then the water seeps down, and so if they need it wetter, they'll go down here. We're not slowing down. We are a tidal wave right now, and uh, we're not going anywhere. It's the year of urban agriculture for Seattle, so we're trying to capitalize on that. And we are getting uh, kind of an exponential growth in student energy at this point. We have, um, like I said, about 15 people every Monday morning at 7.30 get down here. They don't get credit for it. They don't get money for it. The UW Farm has been coined a duocracy, and down here we do things.